Hi, how are you? Uh, as you can see from my title slide, I'm Michael Callahan. Um, my topic is mass incarceration amongst black African American males in drug related crimes. So uh, during my research, I studied the, uh, the works of Michelle Alexander. Um, Alexander believes these disparities in incarceration didn't just happen out of nowhere, and that they are a product of systemic racism. And according to her, incarceration is actually the new Jim Crow. And I'm here to show you why. So did you know that in America, young black males have a one in four chance of going to prison? These young men actually have a greater chance of going to prison than they do of getting into college and of even getting married. Did you know that in between the years of 1980 and 2011, Roughly 1 million African Americans have been arrested in the U.S. for possession of drug paraphernalia and or drug abuse violations. In that same time period, there have only been about 3,000 African Americans actually arrested for violent crimes, significantly less than the number of white males arrested in the same time period for violent crimes. To get a different side of the story and a different perspective, I interviewed my friend and asked him what it was like to grow up in a primarily African American community with a high crime rate to get the picture from the other side of the story. So one of the first questions I asked my friend Ben was, what was it like growing up in the heart of a high rate crime neighborhood? His response was, one of the biggest things for me was how fast I had to grow up. Growing up in that type of environment, you are exposed to a lot more than the average kid. Growing up, I noticed that I was more mature than most kids from other areas, and that that just came with my life. It's almost as if your innocence is taken away from you at a young age. My next question was, growing up, was there a lot of violence in your neighborhood? His response was, growing up, my parents did their best to hide the violence and crime from me and my siblings. But just because I didn't see the crime doesn't mean I didn't know it was happening. Some nights, more often than not, I would go to sleep hearing the sounds of gunshots. And that was scary for a young kid, especially to hear those things. That was just the tip of the iceberg. As I got older, I saw a lot more and I heard a lot more gruesome things. Next question was did you see these things affect other aspects of your life, whether it be relationships, schoolwork, sports, or your mental state? He said one thing that got to him deeply and often scared him, especially when he was a kid, was just how large and almost gr gruesome-esque the homeless population was. There are certain parts of Oakland that when you walk by or drive by, there's almost a city of trash and junk piled up and homeless people lying around. It's literally such a large group of people that it looks like a small homeless city. It eventually would affect me negatively when I started to walk to school when I got older. I started to see homeless people hopped up on drugs, going crazy, and getting arrested on my walks to school. I used to have nightmares about that. My fourth question was, have you ever experienced losing a loved one or a close friend to the prison system? His response was, one of my uncles was arrested back in 2005 for selling drugs and is still is in jail. Two of my closest friends can't get jobs back home because of misdemeanors that involved marijuana on their records. People that believe or think cops are actually there to help you hold a privilege that people not from my area do not hold. Most people I know are scared of the police. The final question that I asked him, which hit me very hard, was, do you have any problems with police officers and how the prison system conducts their work? And has anything they've ever done personally affected you? His response was, yes, I do. When I was 13 years old, my brother and his two friends were driving me to a party. One of his friends was a dark-skinned black kid, and the other was a Mexican. We drove to the party, which was at the home of the Mexican friend, since I was friends with his younger brother. And as we were walking inside... A cop pulls up and comes at us with his flashlight. 
tells us to sit down on the curb with our hands behind our backs. We had to be on the curb outside his house while being questioned after not being given any single reason as to why. He racially profiled us and wasted our time with racist remarks and by humiliating us in our own neighborhood. After hearing what my friend Ben had to say, I was truly shocked to see how different of a life we grew up with, and all because of racial prejudice by the police officers in his area. The question I keep finding myself asking is how can we let it get this bad? In 2010, there were roughly 1.6 million people in the U.S. prison system, which means roughly every one out of 200 people in the U.S. were in jail. Not that bad of a ratio, right? Well, it is pretty bad when you get down to the statistics. About 14% of the whole U.S. population is African American. Yet 36% of the prison population is African American. White males make up 64% of the U.S. citizenship. Yet only 31% of the prison population. I think we all see a trend here. The question should not be, what are these individuals doing wrong, and how can we set them straight with these harsh rules and restrictions, but what are we doing wrong as a country, and how can we fix it, and better ourselves as a whole? Because incarceration has already become the new Jim Crow.